Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning everyone Today we will discuss about presentation strategies Yes, ma'am We need your explanation about how to select presentation strategies after we learned topics, titles and anything about presentations last week Please explain it, ma'am According to a book entitled Technical Presentation Workbook Winning Strategies for Effective Public Speaking by Richard L. Sullivan and Jerry L. Rysinski, 2010, a presentation strategy is the design, approach, or method you use to transfer information to those attending your presentation. For example, a poor strategy for delivering a research report is to stand up and read the entire report. Participants attending this presentation are likely to become bored and consequently may have difficulty focusing on the information. You use this strategy when the length of the presentation is such that two presenters would be more effective than one. Each presenter has different expertise or specialty areas. A guest speaker can bring a new of different perspectives to participants. Advantages Two or more points of view are presented. Change of pace and face for the participants. Variety Disadvantages requires more coordination and planning time than some other strategies. Obvious differences in presentation skills can cause problems. Conflicts or confusion between presenters can cause problems. The most common strategies you can use to deliver your presentations are 1. Illustrated presentations 2. Technical demonstrations 3. Brainstorming 4. Case studies 5. Role plays 6. Discussions 7. Team presentations The right combination of these 7 basic strategies will enable you to plan and deliver a successful presentation. To help you compare the various strategies, the description of each will include an example of how the strategy is used, suggestions on when to use the strategy, advantages of the strategy, and disadvantages of the strategy. 1. Illustrated Presentation The illustrated presentation is the most common presentation strategy since the verbal transfer of information is usually supported by presentation media. Generally, a good illustrated presentation also involves some questions and interaction between the presenter and participants. Example, an engineer has recently returned from visits to several manufacturing plants around the country. These plants are using a new process, and the engineer is making a 30-minute presentation about implementation procedures to other design engineers in her department. To support her presentation, she is using a series of computer slides and a video taken during her visits. Use this strategy when Content is primarily knowledge-based or information-only. Participants may have limited exposure to the topic. The need for participant interaction is minimal. The advantages are presenter is in control. Lots of information can be presented in a short amount of time, can be used with small or large groups. The disadvantages are may have limited interaction, may have limited questioning, requires considerable presenter and participant concentration. 2. Technical Demonstration A technical demonstration is centered on the presentation of a step-by-step -step procedure of the use of equipment, tools, or materials. This is a hands-on how-to type of presentation. Example, the quality control department has received a new piece of testing equipment. One of the engineering technicians is planning a demonstration for five other technicians. Following the demonstration, 
Each participant will be given an opportunity to practice using the equipment under the supervision of the presenter. Use this strategy when content is primarily skill-based. Participants need to know how to perform a procedure. The advantages are participants are usually actively involved, presenter controls the pace of the demonstration, motivation is high as the demonstration usually relates directly to the participant's future or current jobs. The disadvantages are difficult to do with large groups, requires increased planning time for arranging facilities, setting up equipment, etc. Requires a high degree of technical skill with the equipment, tools, and materials being demonstrated. 3. Brainstorming an engineer once defined brainstorming as a random idea generator. During brainstorming, ideas and suggestions related to a topic or problem are generated by the participants. The results of brainstorming are often used as the basis for a discussion or problem-solving activity. Example, an engineer is asked to conduct a project planning meeting. Recognizing there are several alternatives the planning team should consider. The engineer facilitates a brainstorming session to create a list of alternatives. Once the brainstorming is completed, the resulting list is used as the basis of a discussion. Use this strategy when a list of ideas or suggestions is needed in a short period of time. You want to actively involve all participants. The group is relatively small, fewer than 15. The advantages are highly participatory, participant-centered activity, enjoyable and interesting, generates a wide range of ideas, fast-paced. The disadvantages are participants must have some knowledge about the topic, Presenters must have good facilitation skills. If not controlled, a few participants may dominate. For case study, in a case study, a real-life situation or scenario is presented and participants are asked to react to the situation either individually or in small groups. Participant reactions may be given verbally or in writing. Example, an engineer is making a presentation on metallurgical failures in boilers. During the presentation, a case study focusing on a specific power plant problem is distributed. Participants are given a few minutes to read the case study and then form small groups to consider a series of questions. The presenter then conducts a discussion focusing on the answers to the questions. Use this strategy when there is a need to focus participants on a realistic problem or situation. You want to connect your presentation content to a real-life situation. You want to ensure participants understand and can apply presentation information. The advantages are highly participatory, participant-centered activity, enjoyable and interesting, motivational. The disadvantages are participants must have some background related to the topic, requires development time, may require more presentation time than some other strategies, presenter must know how to facilitate case study discussions. 5. Role Play In this presentation strategy, participants play out roles in a situation related to the topic. Role plays may be planned in advance or may be spontaneous. Example, a group of engineering managers is attending a course on supervisory leadership. 
One of the presenters asked two of the participants to take a few minutes to review the role-play instructions in the course notebook. The purpose of the first role-play is to show how not to provide positive reinforcement to associates. Two other participants are often asked to demonstrate the correct procedure during a second role-play. Following the role-plays, the presenter leads a discussion focusing on what occurred during each role-play. Use this strategy when you want to actively involve participants. Content relates to relationships and interactions among people. You want to relate presentation content to an actual event. The advantages are participant-centered activity, highly participatory, provides relevant application of presentation information, enjoyable and interesting. The disadvantages are Time required for development. Time required to conduct and discuss role plays. Some individuals may be reluctant to participate. Without guidance, the role play may move away from the topic, may require a special room set up. Presenter must know how to facilitate role plays and the subsequent discussions. Difficult to do with large groups. 6. Discussion this type of presentation is an interactive process of sharing information and experiences. With most of the information coming from the participants, the presenter serves as the facilitator, leader, or manager of the discussion. Example, a salesperson completes a demonstration of the features of a new computer-aided design software package. Following the demonstration, the manager of the engineering department leads a discussion on the implications of the software package for the work performed in their department. Use this strategy when participants have knowledge about the topic and you want them to share their knowledge with others. You want input to solve a problem react an idea or respond to a proposal. You want to determine if participants understand the information that was presented. The advantages are participant-centered activity, highly participatory, involves all participants. The disadvantages are requires more time to conduct than other strategies. Presenter must be able to facilitate the discussion some participants may try to dominate, may require special room set up, difficult to do with large groups. 7. Team Presentations A team presentation is one conducted by more than one presenter. It could consist of a presenter with a guest speaker, two or more presenters, or a panel of presenters. Example. A company has built a new plant. Two engineers are asked to travel to the new plant to conduct a series of presentations for new employees. Each engineer assumes responsibility for planning a specific presentation. When one engineer is presenting, the other in, is in the room to assist, answer questions, and offer traditional comments. Use this strategy when the length of the presentation is such that two presenters would be more effective than one. Each presenter has different expertise or specialty areas. A guest speaker can bring a new or different perspective to participants. The advantages are two or more points of view are presented, change of pace and phase for the participants, variety, the disadvantages are requires more coordination and planning time than some other strategies. Obvious differences in presentation skills can cause problems. Conflicts or confusion between presenters can cause problems. Your explanation about the seven presentation strategies is clear, Ma, Am. We know when to use the strategies, the advantages of the strategies, and the disadvantages of the strategies. That is good, class. Do you have anything else to ask?
What are the criteria of selecting presentation strategies, ma'am? So, how do you select the appropriate strategies for your presentations? Should you use the same combination each time you make a presentation? Probably not. A given combination of strategies may be very effective for one presentation, but ineffective for another. Also, if all of our presentations begin to look and sound the same, both you and your participants will become bored. It is important to use variety appropriately during your presentation. Consider these questions when making your selection. Is the strategy appropriate for the topic? Let's assume you recently attended a conference on the latest technique in non-destructive testing and have been asked to make a presentation to other engineers in your organization. This combination of strategies would be effective. Introduce your presentation by announcing the topic and then use brainstorming to create a list of the types of non-destructive tasks currently being used within your organization. Leave the list on the flip chart for future reference during your presentation. Use an illustrated presentation to cover the key points you picked up during the conference. Display your key points with a computer presentation. Interact with participants by asking questions during the presentation. Provide the participants with handouts of any particularly important information you are referring to. Move into a discussion of the implications for changes in non-destructive testing procedures and techniques based on the information you just presented. Also, use the results of the brainstorming. And by summarizing your presentation briefly, review the main points and discuss the next step in making any changes in non-destructive testing procedures. What is the background of the participants? If your audience has a sufficient background in your topic, then you can use more brainstorming, discussion, case studies, and role plays. If participants have a limited awareness of the topic, use an illustrated or team presentation. How much presentation time will you have? If you are planning a 20-minute briefing, using several strategies will be difficult. Also, some strategies such as brainstorming, Discussion, case studies, and role plays are difficult to use when time is limited. This is true for technical demonstrations too. Since you will need time to demonstrate the procedure and the participants will need time to practice it. However, if you are given two hours for a presentation, then you should build in several strategies to pro provide some variety. Can you imagine two hours of straight lectures? Neither can your participants. How much participant input and interaction is needed? Many presentations are based on input from the participants are opposed to the presenter, being the source of all information. Assume you are asked to make a presentation during the next staff meeting on the possible restructuring of your department. Using a variety of strategies and involving your colleagues would be much more effective than using only an illustrated presentation on the restructuring options you alone have developed. Consider this combination of strategies. After introducing the presentation by stating the topic and assuring those attending that the session will be highly interactive, use a brief Illustrated presentation to review the present structure of the department. Show the current structure on a handout, flip chart, or by using a computer presentation. Use brainstorming to identify the strengths and limitations of the present structure. List these on flip chart pages and attach them to the wall of the room. 
invite a guest speaker from an organization that has recently reorganized one of its departments to address the group. Ask the speaker to focus on the reasons changes were made, the challenges encountered during the change process, and the benefits experienced from the new structure. Encourage the participants to ask lots of questions during the guest speaker's presentation. Follow the guest speaker's presentation with a discussion of the implications for your organization. List any new points or ideas on the flip chart. Distribute a case study of another organization's efforts to reorganize one of its departments. You could also use the guest speaker situation as a case study. Divide the participants into small groups and ask each group to prepare a brief response to the case study questions. Discuss the implications of the case study for your organization. Conclude your presentation with a brief illustrated presentation summarizing the main points made by participants. Assure participants that a summary report of the session will be distributed soon usually within 48 to 72 hours. How large will your audience be? The number of participants attending your presentation can have a dramatic effect on your selection of strategies. Many technical presentations involve a small number of participants, 10 to 15 usually. All seven of the strategies presented here are effective with small group presentations. As the size of your audience increases, some of the strategies become less appropriate. For example, if 30 to 40 participants attend your presentation, using such participatory strategies as case studies, role plays, and discussions may become difficult. How much fun should participants have? While many topics do not lend themselves to fun activities, there are presentations that can be highly enjoyable and effective. Consider the topic of self-directed work teams. One aspect of team development is human relations. A series of role plays focusing on human relations could be both informative and highly enjoyable. Ma'am, thank you for your comprehensive explanation. How about supporting our ideas for a presentation? Would you explain it? Ma'am, please. According to Michael Osborne and Susan Osborne, Randall Osborne, Kathleen J. Turner, 2015, in their book entitled Public Speaking, Finding Your Voice, Supporting Materials, 1. Facts and Statistics, 2. Testimony, 3. Examples, and 4. Narratives are the pillars, braces, and cross braces of serious speech making. The effective and ethical use of supporting materials encourages others to take your ideas seriously. Such materials give strength and human appeal to the voice you are discovering and developing. At this point, you should have gathered a wealth of information and begun to generate your main ideas. Okay, we discuss the four forms of supporting materials that make use of this information. 1. Facts and Statistics Your first objective when researching any topic is to get your facts straight. Facts and statistics are indispensable to responsible speaking, especially when addressing informative or persuasive topics. When audience members get the impression that the facts are in their favor, they are likely to give your attention and respect. Facts are statements that can be verified as true or false. Statistics are facts measured mathematically. In for show me the numbers culture, statistics are useful for describing size precisely, making predictions, illustrating trends, and demonstrating important comparisons. The following is an illustration. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the percentage of children aged 6 to 11 years in the United States who were obese increased from 7% in 1980 to nearly 18% in 2010. 
Similarly, the percentage of adolescents aged 12 to 19 years who are obese increased from 5% to 18% over the same period. These are ominous trends for the health of this country. We typically listen carefully and respectfully to such statistical claims, democratic societies, public opinion polls that demonstrate the will of the people can strongly influence policy decisions. Constructing facts and figures. The art of the fact may seem a strange expression. Don't facts stand alone without need for further help from the speaker. Despite the commonplace assumption, the truth is that facts don't speak for themselves. You must explain what they mean. You select them to make some point and then interpret them. Developing the ability to frame facts effectively is vital to finding your voice presenting statistics in such a rounded off manner can have more impact and be more easily remembered. On the other hand, there are some audiences and situations for which the exact numbers and sources of data could be critical issues. Your colleague audience or critical listeners might be such an audience. You must decide whether the general or the precise way of expressing facts will work best for you. If you are uncertain on this point, our advice is to err on the side of precision because facts and figures are so vital to responsible knowledge and ethical speaking. We may have a tendency to overemphasize them. Remember to use a variety of supporting materials and pick the spots in your speech at which the use of facts and figures will be most effective. Don't drown your listeners in a sea of numbers that will numb them to your underlying ideas. Again, be selective. Remember also the possible use of presentation aids. Presentation aids can be very effective for communicating factual and statistical information. Simple bulleted textual graphics can help to emphasize the importance of one or a few particularly compelling facts. Testing facts and figures for most speech topics. Your research should yield an array of facts and statistics. To test them for their usefulness in your speech, you must subject them to the four R's. Learn how to assess the value of sources and develop the ability to distinguish fact-based interpretations from opinions. 2. Testimony You use testimony when you quote the words or summarize the ideas of others to support and illustrate your points. Using testimony is like calling witnesses to speak on your behalf. You Add their ethos to yours. The three forms of testimony are expert, lay, and prestige. Using expert testimony. Expert testimony comes from people who are qualified by training or experience to speak as authorities on a subject. Such support can be especially useful when you are not a recognized expert and when your topic is complicated, unfamiliar, or controversial. When you use expert testimony, remember that competence is area-specific. Your experts can speak as authorities only within their area of expertise. As you introduce such experts in your speech, Stress their credentials. If their testimony is recent, mention that as well. If the testimony appears in a prestigious journal, book, or newspaper, let listeners know where you found it. B. Lay testimony represents the wisdom of ordinary people. It may come from people who have first-hand experience with a topic or issue or who simply have strong feelings about it, while not appropriate for validating complex or disputed ideas. Lay testimony helps illustrate real-life consequences and adds authenticity to your speech. It is highly regarded in democratic societies, in which the experiences and opinions of everyday folk are highly valued. 
C. Prestige Testimony associates your message with the words of an admired figure, for example, Thomas Jefferson or text such as the Declaration of Independence. While such sources do not typically provide expertise with respect to your particular topic, their words can lend a heightened elegance and wisdom to your speeches because of this quality. But this testimony is often used as a source of inspiration in ceremonial speaking. Designing Testimony other considerations as you frame testimony for use in your speech. Decide whether to quote or to summarize what others say. When you repeat the exact words of others, you are using a direct quotation. Generally speaking, direct quotations are the more powerful form of citation. They are useful when statements are brief and eloquent or when the exact wording is important for the point you are making. They are also effective for supporting complex or controversial assertions before skeptical audiences. Write out quotations on separate note cards to preserve the exact wording. Give some thought to how you will blend them into your speech, for example, according to blanks or in the words of blanks. Pause as you read the words to increase their impressiveness and maintain eye contact with listeners during the pauses. When quotes are too long or complex to present word for word, you may paraphrase or restate what others have said in your own words. If your sources are experts on current topics or issues, stress their credentials and the timing of their testimony. As you use the testimony, be sure that the quotation you select reflects the overall meaning and intent of its author. 3. Examples Examples bring a speech to life. Just as pictures serve as graphic illustrations for a printed text, examples serve as verbal illustrations in a speech. Listeners reveal their importance when they ask, Can you give me an example? Examples involving people help listeners relate to your message by showing the human side of situation. It is one thing to talk in general terms about the growing problem of students who have to borrow huge sums to finish college. It is quite another when you can say it is tough to start out in life $60,000 in the hole. That is what happened to Clarissa Mayhew, who graduated from here last May. When examples are drawn from your personal experience, they help establish your credibility to speak on the topic. Four narratives. A narrative is a story that conveys an idea or establishes a mood. Like examples, narratives provide concrete illustrations of abstract ideas and issues, engage listeners in the speech, and help to cross the barriers that often separate people. But more than examples, they describe a sequence of actions that unfolds over time. We use narratives to remember the past illustrate our ideas and transmit our cultural traditions from one generation to another. Americans, for instance, have long been fond of rags to riches stories, celebrating our commitment to hard work and individual responsibility, not to mention riches. Stories such as this help to define who we are and what we are about. It is clear, ma'am. Let me ask you whether we can combine supporting materials in one presentation? That is a good question, Emily. Let us come to selecting and combining supporting materials in responsible speaking. The four forms of supporting materials, facts and statistics, testimony, examples, and narratives, rarely stand alone and apart from each other. If you combine them, they lend great strength to your speech, Facts and figures ground your message in reality, while expert testimony provides credibility to your claims. Lay testimony brings your message home to ordinary folks and adds the wisdom of the streets. 
while prestige testimony aligns you with respected authority figures. Examples reinforce facts and figures by focusing on the experiences of representative individuals and situations. Narratives tell stories that add drama and sometimes humor to your message. Examples and narratives can also engage audiences in support of your position. Different situations will call for different emphasis as you combine supporting materials. Your choice of materials should reflect careful consideration of the challenges posed by your particular speech. If your topic is controversial, rely primarily on facts, statistics, factual examples, or expert testimony. If your ideas seem abstract, bring them to life with examples and narrative. If a point is highly technical, define key terms and supplement facts and statistics with expert testimony. If you need to arouse emotions, use lay testimony and vivid examples or narratives. If you need to diffuse emotions, emphasize facts, statistics, and expert testimony. If your ideas are novel or unfamiliar, provide key facts and illustrative examples. Define and explain basic terms and concepts or provide analogies based on the experience of your listeners. Thank you for answering my question, ma'am. I understand now. However, I have many excuses of not having a presentation. I am too nervous. Top 10 excuses for not making a presentation. 1. Do not know anything. Forget this attitude. You know a lot about a lot of things. People tend to believe that others know the same things they know, but other people do not, or they do not know it the same way you do. 2. I need to lose 10 pounds first. How many years have you been using that excuse? You can avoid many of life's best adventures by waiting until. Fill in your own blank. No one else cares about the 10 pounds except you. 3. I get too nervous. Here is an opportunity to overcome your anxiety. You are far more aware of your anxiousness than the audience is. Walking to the front of the room and looking at all the eyes looking back can be very intimidating. Being the center of attention can bring out the natural shyness in many of us. It can feel like every flaw is exposed. Sometimes we even invent flaws that do not exist and let our imagination run away with us. But your presentation is just a few minutes of your life. Keep it in perspective. For people will laugh at me. If you do not something that makes people laugh, Laugh with them, often a little self-deprecating humor and move on. Most people are busy being happy, they aren't the ones that they got. 5. I have never done a talk before. Fear of the unknown can feel huge. Having an audience watch as you navigate through new territory can be a major obstacle for inexperienced speakers. Even professional speakers can feel intimidated in a new setting. Remember the first time you did something new? You observed, applied what you learned, and repeated. Observed, applied what you learned, and repeated. And before long, the new task was not intimidating at all. 6. I know I will not do it right. There is no perfect score in speaking. Unlike the Olympics, there is no judge expecting you to score as 10 every time you speak. Even if you gave the same speech several times, it wouldn't always be a 10. Each situation, audience, and time is different. And the key is to be as good as you can be right now. Being good includes being flexible, able to adapt to the situation, and able to recover when things don't go perfectly. Seven, I don't feel well, and I'm sure I'll feel bad on the day of the presentation. The mind is an amazing thing. You can easily talk yourself into being sick if it will get you out of something you don't want to do. How many kids try to avoid a day of school by saying, but I really do have a stomachache? Then after mom makes them to go to school, they forget the stomachaches and get through the day just fine. 
It's also interesting to know that the sniffles you feel just before you take the stage will disappear while you're speaking and then return after you're finished. The audience may never know you felt congested. 8. I don't have enough time to prepare. Face it, there's never enough time. Give yourself 15 minutes and you can pull together enough information to give a solid overview of almost any topic. Have you ever heard the phrase, work expands to fill the time available? It's true. Focus on how much time you have, not how little. 9. I was humiliated on stage when I was 7 years old. You've grown up and learned how to do lots of things. You will have a new experience and a new outcome now. Childhood experiences can leave a lasting impression, and the feeling of humiliation has been embedded in you. Call a counselor who can probably help you work through the experience and move forward. 10. I'll die if I have to give a speech. No, you really won't. Anxiety is real, but the situations we imagine might happen are usually not real. If you are extremely afraid of speaking in front of people, sessions with a good speech coach or a counselor can be a great investment in your future. Almost every career involves some contact with people, and improving your ability to communicate will have a positive impact on all of your relationships. Yes, you're right, ma'am. Those are my excuses when I am asked to have a presentation. Would you give me any advice, ma'am? All right, Emily. Here are the tips for overcoming speaking anxiety. One, the first step is preparation. Give your speech or presentation careful thought. You will feel more confident if you know you stuff well. Repeatedly practice your speech in front of a mirror or a friend or family member is preferable. As the cornerstone of your confidence and skill as a speaker, preparation is one of the most crucial tactics for breaking through speaking anxiety. 2. Know your audience. Recognize the requirements and standards of your audience. Make your speech relevant to their interest and comprehension level. In order to communicate effectively and overcome speaking anxiety, it is essential to understand your audience. Knowing your audience well will help you adjust your speech or presentation to their needs, expectations, and comprehension level. 3. Visualization Envision yourself delivering an effective presentation. Visualization has been shown to increase confidence and lessen anxiety. Visualization is a potent mental technique that entails vividly envisioning a particular situation or result. When it comes to overcoming speaking anxiety, visualization can ease your nerves and help you mentally prepare for your speech. 4. Breathing Techniques Before speaking, try some deep breathing techniques to distress. Breathe in gradually through your nose, then out through your mouth. One useful and efficient method for dealing with anxiety, including speaking anxiety, is to practice breathing exercises. Breathing correctly can ease anxiety, ease physical tension, and enhance concentration. 5. Relaxation Techniques To lessen general anxiety, try relaxation methods like progressive muscle relaxation or mindfulness meditation. Relaxation methods are useful tools for reducing speaking nervousness and fostering poise and serenity. These methods target easing stress, reducing tense muscles, and enhancing general relaxation. They are especially helpful for people who struggle with public speaking. 6. Positive Self-Talk Swap out negative ideas for optimistic ones. Remind yourself of your advantages and prior public speaking triumphs. 
Positive self-talk is a cognitive technique that helps people manage their anxiety and increase their confidence by speaking in an upbeat and affirming manner. It can be an effective strategy for getting over speaking nervousness and enhancing your public speaking abilities in general. 7. Seek feedback. Consult with peers, mentors, or speaking coaches to get their opinions. Positive criticism can assist you in becoming better. In order to grow both personally and professionally, getting feedback is crucial. Particularly if you want to get better at public speaking and get over your speaking anxiety, feedback offers insightful opinions and insights that can improve your presentation and boost your self-assurance. 8. Concentrate on the message, not perfection. Keep in mind that it's acceptable for your speech to contain errors or flaws. It's your message that counts most. When it comes to public speaking, it's helpful to have the mentality that focusing on the message, not perfection can help you get over your speaking anxiety and give presentations that are more impactful. 9. Record yourself. Take notes during your practice sessions and analyze them to pinpoint areas that need work. Practicing your public speaking or presentation while recording yourself is a useful self-improvement strategy. It enables you to assess your performance objectively, pinpoint areas in need of development, and improve your speaking abilities. 10. Acknowledge your nerves. Recognize that experiencing anxiety is common. Even seasoned presenters occasionally experience anxiety before giving a speech. A key mentality and tactic for getting over speaking anxiety and developing into a more assured public speaker is accepting nervousness. Rather than attempting to completely eradicate anxiety, this method identifies it as a normal reaction and teaches you to work with, not against it. Thank you very much for your comprehensive explanation. I understand our materials today completely. Yes, ma'am. I can use our materials today as the reference in making a presentation in the future. Thank you. You are welcome, students. Thank you for your attention. I think it is the end of our meeting. See you next week. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.